Every successful badminton player on the international stage shares one thing in common. It doesn't matter what country they're from, what gender they are, or what discipline they play. Behind all of them is a coach who's been guiding them through this badminton journey. But what if, like the majority of my subscribers, you don't have access to an experienced badminton coach? Hey guys, it's Jonathan from Swift Badminton School. I want to first talk about why a coach is actually important and why can't you just try and figure it out yourself? Well, the way I see it, there are three main factors that depends on the current stage you're at. When I first started playing badminton, I was in a very similar situation to a lot of you. The badminton club that I played at was really just a church and they repurposed the hall by putting up a net once a week and having you know kids play badminton there. There was an adult supervising the session but there was no coach and it was just a bunch of kids playing badminton you know with no guidance. This was the only place I played at for a long time and as you can imagine it wasn't so great. In badminton it's really important to use the right technique. You can't just hit a shuttle however you like. There's a very specific way you need to do that. And this is why when you watch a pro player they look very fluent and elegant on court. But when you watch a beginner they look a bit more clumsy, they don't look as you know coordinated and that's all down to the technique. A coach at this stage is critical to guiding you correctly. Instead of developing bad habits a coach will set you up with a good foundation. As a beginner, especially if you were just 10 years old like me, you might not appreciate the importance of learning things the correct way. Maybe you hear all these complicated discussions about technique and just think, well, why don't I just hit it however I want? It, you know, it works for me. This is quite a common attitude and it can be explained by something called the Dunning-Kruger effect. This is a concept in psychology where beginners at a skill tend to overestimate their abilities, whereas skilled individuals tend to underestimate their abilities. The reason this occurs is because beginners don't have enough knowledge of the sport to accurately judge themselves. How can you accurately assess your personal ability if you don't have a good understanding of what's a high standard and what isn't. They tend to assess their own ability higher than it actually is because they aren't aware of how much more they still need to learn. Oh, hi Mark. This is why having an experienced coach is just so important. They're able to notice issues in your technique that you would never have caught even if you spent hours analyzing your own gameplay. So for me, without a coach, I picked up a lot of bad habits, which I wouldn't have if, you know, I just had that proper coaching from the get-go. And the reason this is so important is because of muscle memory. Muscle memory is when you repeat an action so many times that it just becomes ingrained in your body. You can start doing it without thinking. The problem was because I had been playing so much with bad technique, the bad technique became ingrained in my body and then it was very difficult to change it and to reprogram my brain to start playing with the correct technique. Remember, it might take 10 hours to develop a good habit, but it takes 100 hours to unlearn a bad habit. The progression from beginner to intermediate, in my opinion, occurs when a player is able to start executing the basic techniques correctly. At this level, the focus of the coach shifts from helping you develop the right muscle memory to laying out the roadmap for further progress. After I managed to escape that crappy church, my badminton started improving more and more. It was a struggle, but I was able to rewire my brain and my badminton still started to improve. At this point, I got the basic techniques down and I started playing at a few different clubs. There was coaching here, but it was still very, very casual and informal. It was one coach for about 20 players, so you didn't get much individual attention. They were more there just to run the sessions. This brings me to the second reason why having a coach is important. At this level, you no longer need to learn the basics because you've already got them down. It's about refining your gameplay and finding areas to target and drastically improve at. There are so many different aspects of badminton with a high skill ceiling, so even once you've learned the basics, there's still so much more training to do. But what should be the priority for your training? Should it be your footwork, attack, defense, net game? Which one's gonna have the most positive effect on your badminton game? Without having a coach to set the roadmap for future progression, it's, it's hard to know. And even if you did know, let's say someone told you, you need to work on your footwork and if you can just master that aspect, you'll be a great player. Well, how exactly do you work on your footwork? What exact drills and exercises should you be doing? How often should you do them? These aren't questions that you can easily find the answer to yourself. You need a coach. So, so since I still wasn't getting much you know, proper coaching with individual attention, I took to the internet and browsed a ton of forums and websites to try and figure this out myself. But the problem is, this is a very difficult process. Even if the information exists, you have to spend so much time just trawling through the internet, piecing things together yourself, and a, it's very time consuming and not easy to find these nuggets of information that are hidden away. And B, you sometimes get a lot of conflicting information where one person says this and one person says something opposite and trying to figure out which one's right, it's just a huge headache. It's not easy to do on your own. Instead of trying to go the long way, having a coach is like someone draw out a shortcut for you that's gonna help you reach your badminton goals in just the quickest time possible. Instead of always getting lost and stalling in your progress, you'll always have a good idea on what the next step should be. Number three, motivation. In every skill, there's a concept called diminishing returns. This means the higher in that skill level you get, 
the harder it becomes to make any progress. And this should make sense. Think about how much a badminton player can improve in their first year of the sport. They go from barely being able to even hit the shuttle to being able to play pretty decent rallies. And now think about a professional player. They train seven days a week, multiple hours per day, pushing their body to the limit. And in one year, they're only able to squeeze out some incremental improvements in the game. So at an advanced level, where you're no longer getting that positive feedback loop where you improve every session, it's important to have a coach to motivate and keep the player on track with their training. When you play badminton once a week and each week is just 10 times better than the last week, it's easy to keep wanting to train. But when you go months without seeing any obvious progress, it can be a lot harder to keep pushing yourself in training. Think about the last time you did a tough shadow workout, you know, the type that leaves you panting for breath, doubled over and just feeling completely exhausted. Now, imagine if you had to force yourself to get out of bed at 6am to do that every single day and barely saw any progress. For most of us, even the most determined out there, we'd probably start to falter. I bring this up because the psychology of an athlete is a very important variable that just often gets overlooked, but it can't be ignored. And having a good coach does wonders for your motivation. It keeps you accountable and you'll have that person there to push you when you really need it. A good coach can be the difference between a badminton player getting mentally burnt out versus someone who's able to just keep going and persevere through the tough times. So as you progress through your badminton journey, a coach will play a key role in teaching you the correct muscle memory, laying the roadmap for you to further improve, and then keeping you motivated and pushing you hard. I've experienced both sides of it, from playing in that crappy church, to getting to train under a coach who's had experience playing on the international stage. As you can imagine, this allowed me to improve so much more. This coach was Ben Beckman. He's a fantastic player. He's had the chance to play against players like Chen Long on the international stage, but he's also fantastic at teaching, which aren't two things that always go hand in hand. Back when I was still training, I learned a lot with Ben. So no matter what your goals are or what you need to focus on, I highly recommend seeking out a badminton coach to help you get there. Even if there's no one in your area, there are online coaching services which can still provide these three attributes. I don't I don't offer this service because my time is spent focusing on the YouTube channel, but I know that Ben does. So if you want to learn under someone who has coached international players and also washed up badminton players turned YouTuber, <laughs> then head on over to his Instagram page where he has all the information on how to become a student. But no matter what, having any experienced coach in any skill is what's going to allow you to improve exponentially. Speaking of starting a YouTube channel, that is actually a lot harder than it might sound. It is something that really requires a coach or a teacher. I get quite a few compliments on my editing skills and you guys might not know this, but a few months ago, before I started the channel, I literally had no idea how to use Adobe Premiere, the, the editing software that I'm now using. That's why I wanted to tell you about this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on editing, business, technology, and lots more. By going through this online class in Adobe Premiere by Geordie, I was able to teach myself the program completely from scratch. And since then, I've used it to edit every single video. And so I'm a huge fan of Skillshare because this channel literally wouldn't exist without them. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to all of the classes in their catalog, including this Adobe Premiere one. So you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and maybe even start a YouTube channel of your own. Skillshare is more affordable than most online learning platforms out there. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. To be clear, that's not $10 per class. That's $10 to give you access to all of the classes on the website. So you can learn whatever you want, when you want. As a university student currently paying 9,000 pounds a year for tuition, it just blew my mind with how much you can learn for such a low price. To make things even better, the first 500 Swift Badminton viewers who sign up with the link below get two months of Skillshare completely for free. In these two months, you still get access to the entire catalog and you don't pay a penny. Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and thanks to you, the viewers, for watching it. Also, big thanks to my Patreon supporters, Jordan He and Sai. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.